storing itinerant childhoods, weaving a sense of belonging through collaborative art making with Alice Mendes and Ginny Connolly Mendes. If you have never been to Australia before, it is hard to describe the intense, full-bodied uniqueness of this ancient continent where people live, have lived for over 65,000 years. The hot, dry wind, the damp heat, sweat rolling down your back as soon as you step out of the shower, the never-ending blue skies. And this is just my tiny place, footprint on the far New South Wales coast and then up the Queensland coast as far as Cape Tribulation. A subtropical and tropical experience through the lens of someone who grew up and spent most of their life in northern England. The grey damp, the ancient ruins and traffic jams. A complete dichotomy to my life today. I look at and travel through Australia as a settler colonial academic. My two and a half year old child was born here. Still a white settler colonial, but her connection to this land and country and greater dreaming of this ancient land is different. This audio visual presentation shares our journey of collaborative art journaling and nature connection as we live our itinerant life in 2021. Part of a wider self-funded research project into relationship to place and those living itinerant lives. This paper, although written and presented by Alice Mendes, focuses on the relationship between Alice and Ginny, mother and daughter and Ginny's voice is heard and seen through the collaborative art making. I created this presentation of our family, autoethnography, with an ethic of care and awareness of the autoethnographic research by Sophie Tamas on writing about and with your daughter. In creating the video and deciding what drawings, images and sounds to include, I hope to accurately record how Ginny engages with each place, environment we're in, and the use and value that she gives to the objects found. One of Ginny's, or Bobby Ninny as she calls herself, favourite books is Baby Business by Jasmine Seymour, which we read and reread, lapping up the images, embodying the actions of the indigenous baby smoking ceremony. The author Jasmine Seymour explained in an interview that the book Baby Business is for anyone who lives in Australia, as they have heard many elders generously say that if you were born on country, then you belong to country. As I learn more about indigenous knowledges, I am becoming aware of the importance of belonging, which leaves questions about itinerant childhoods, defined as young people growing up in multiple locations. I wonder if you can sense belonging if you're always on the move. For Ginny, a white Australian British child born on Bundjalung country but no longer living there, where does she belong? This presentation will explore this space of tangled belongings. Join me as I weave a basket. I was inspired by the collaborative art making by the indigenous and non-indigenous women in Sisters Holding Space. And I began this project hoping to create a cartography of itinerant childhoods through my lens of crafting from country by weaving baskets from plants in each place we spent time in, drawing on indigenous basket weaving knowledges my own experiences as a willow basket maker in the UK and Pink's work on sensory ethnography. I wish you all could smell the damp, alive greenness of the reeds dancing in my hands. As I weave, I want to work authentically and with respect and I couldn't find any local indigenous women to learn their basket weaving techniques and I know this is a sensitive space. So for this first basket, I'm following techniques shared on a video provided by the Tjanbe Tjampi Desert Weavers online. I know I could use methods I have used in the UK, but I am conscious of appropriation and I struggle with the concept of using the Eurocentric knowledges when exploring connection to country, as that is actually following a colonialist mindset. So I shall keep weaving, following the techniques shared by the indigenous people on the video. I have observed Ginny's play and she makes sense of each new place, her grown confidence with the animals that we have cared for and the places to swim, the seasonal fruit to munch, oh the mulberries, 
and gardens to tend and have slowed down or attempted to be with her. Give the doggy she pats. makes sense and begins to be able to vocalise places, events, songs, people and books that are special to her. Our art journal is, special, is a special leather-bound book that we get out to draw together with our natural stockmar beeswax crayons. She also has her own journal that she can draw in when she likes. But this book is for time between the two of us. Born on Bundjalung country, uprooted by borders closing, jobs disappearing, flights cancelled, floating around Brisbane. Landing for almost a year on the lands of the Gobi Gobi people, uprooted again, urged by a sense of nomadism, not wanting to be stuck once borders do open, and owning a new van, heading north into the sun. Making sense of place as an adult is so different to a two-year-old child. Slowing down, watching her agency, connection, thing power, the leaves of succulent plants, the soft fur of doggies and feathers from the birdies, shells and stones from the beach, goes on the water, treasures goes savoured, on. gathered, Sank. gifted, on the sand. sheer joy and excitement in the intrepidation of the connection to each new animal, place, thing. I shall keep weaving the basket. As I weave, I am thinking of Tracy Bunder about making and filling baskets and wondering if that is why making a basket was so appealing to me. With my urge to connect a country from making something from natural materials that I could carry my life and belongings with me. These grasses, and therefore this basket, came from Bundjalung country. But what is Bundjalung country to me? I wonder, can I touch, smell and taste country as I weave this basket? The rhythmical exercise moving my fingers and spurring my mind. But I, do I need this basket to anchor my connection to Bundjalung country? As my waters broke onto her sand before Ginny was born and our placenta buried into her land, do I need a basket to have that sense of place and belonging and storing of my life here, there? Am I falling into the trap as settler colonial of dominance over the non-human, the taking of its treasures to a place that was not, is not their home? Maybe the basket is a rememberal from Harry Potter, an aid memoir, or just a beautiful basket quickly adopted as Bobby Ninnies and taken off to become part of her play kitchen. My sister had a baby in the UK in July. Baby Anya. Baby Anya may not have been physically held by Ginny, but she has been embodied in her drawings and play, featuring heavily in our daily lives. We've been sent some of her tiny baby clothes, which fit one of Ginny's dollies. Baby Anya's things have their own agency and connection as they have travelled across the world. Yes. Who's that? Family ties, thing, thought, power, and love. Family love, overriding across worlds. Except for video chats, we are a screen-free family, so extensive travel means reading lots of picture books together. These picture books help sculpt our conversations and support her identity and connection to place. We join the local library when we land in a new place. I'm conscious of what we read and often miss sections or change terms to create a more inclusive and age-suitable story. Alongside British and Australian classics, we have stories written by Indigenous authors, LGBTQI stuff, stories questioning stereotypes of gender, body size and ability. Threads that have been spun throughout our journey are the weekly cyclical roll of the dustbin lorry or the garbage truck, depending on where you live. This is a weekly tradition. Yes. We have waited, Come watched and anxiously, bin. and waved vigorously. For Ginny, the excitement is intense. She often cannot yeah. wave to the dustbin Where driver by the time they arrive. She is so in awe of the <gasps> whole experience. Yes, we know. Throughout this paper, Ginny is not seen as the future but seen as having her own direct agency, storing a place, totem and journey. The art making is collaborative and not always adult directed. It emerges through observation. I see similarities in the approach to that of the extensive work by Linda Knight et al on intergenerational art making. When Ginny and I draw together, it is not directly about the drawing. It is more about the talk, 
about remembering the moments. It is, as Phillips and Bunder describe, a storing of our lives. I argue that it is this storing of our lives that I share through this audio-visual family autoethnography that acknowledges the vibrancy and the normality within an itinerant childhood. We may be moving from place to place, through country, but directed by a child-led pedagogy of clear rhythms. Ginny is supported to be present and have time to play and to be in each place. I realise that we do not need to take physical things from each country to be present as we talk, as we have talk. We have our conversations whilst drawing and Ginny talks about key people and places that still resonate with her. There is also a letting go of more Western ideals of ownership, a decolonisation of place, we tread softly and move on with the memory. I do not use our journal as an assessment tool, as Knight et al. describe, but as a space to capture a moment, our conversation, and what is resonating in us both at that time. Using auto theory helps me make some sense, some effective sense of something happening, following Harris and Holman Jones, in this place, in co-production, intergenerationally, on country. Harvesting cane. Weaving and talking, drawing and talking, Bobby exploring life, locations moving, our stuff in storage. A very privileged childhood, a childhood on the move. Play, nature, deep time. What does she take with her? Sometimes objects become key people in our life. Baby An becomes Baby Anya Lantern, Baby Anya Juggling Ball. Thing power. Baby An Anya mango fruit that has fallen from the tree early. A two-year-old development and wonder at our world. This is a visual au audio paper. It is through this performative autoethnography, through the lens of auto theory, that this presentation allows you, hopefully, this, your audience to join us connecting with nature, art and family as we explore place and belonging within the context of itinerant childhoods. The art journal continues as we perpetually move on. This work, a research project in motion, bounces along. June to October 2021, we left Brisbane and travelled to Yapoon uh, on the central Queensland coast where we broke down, sold our van and bought a Land Rover. We have slept in Bobby's van, Bobby's tent house, two different house sits, a friend's granny flat, a hotel, a cabin and more. We took Lando up to far north Queensland and then returned to our friend's granny flat in Yapoon and for now that is until Christmas. We have no idea what 2022 will bring. We have our stories, our drawings and our memories. And the things we have gathered and made along the way, even if they sit un uneasily with me. Richly supporting us adults and Ginny. Landing softly and respectfully on country. Remember that it does not belong to us. We belong to country.